On this episode, I get really deep on that last question. Don't fast forward. Vey, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 201 of the Ask Gary V Show. All right, we're into the 200s, Monday morning. Feeling good about that? D-Rock doing some snaps over here. We're taping a Daily V today, yeah. which I'm very excited about. You're not, you're not filming right now. You're just gonna let, because we've got this, right? If you want to take a quick little sample, you'll do that. Uh, India, great to see you. Is that a San Francisco Giants? I told what, you. What, what? You guys were debating about that? I was like, like should I wear it? That's really cool. I like it. I noticed. <laughs> India, are you ready for the show? I'm ready for the show. show. <laughs> uh, call in show was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. I want to do that. I think we have some things to figure out. Andy, did we? Uh, I really wish this was a call in show, but I feel like we didn't have time to talk about like the kinks. Yeah. I feel like there's kinks. For the call in, yeah, we'll come out. It'll be easy. All right, but I'll, I think two o two or two o three. I want to do it. So like. I want to dress kinks. All right. Uh, so we are now into the next frontier, episode 200 to 300. You know, I'm really curious how long I'm going to actually do this. Like, I don't feel it wavering, don't worry. But um, I do think it's, like, I would, I would say that I was positive I'd get to 200. I'm not positive I get to 300. I can see us doing something weird and being at 267, being like, that's it. You know, so I really do believe that. All right. <clears throat> Two six seven. We'll be. We'll all be watching that. All right, India. Let's get into the show. The Wealth Life asks, "How do you deal with people who don't keep their word?" Um, well, like I'll be very honest with you. I think one of the great secrets of my business success and life in general is zero expectation of others. I, I you know, I know that a lot of people uh, get mad at me when I say that in my life, in my business life, at, when I say it in public. But it's my truth. I mean, I'm just not that devastated. I, it's a data point. People don't keep their word all the time, India. It happens all the time. As a matter of fact, it's probably a thing that I struggle with the most in being the CEO of this company. A lot of people have worked in other places where the person hasn't kept their word and they're cynical to my word. And so, and listen, I, by the way, I haven't kept my word my whole life, even now, because something may fall through the inbox. Like, you see what's going on now, right? Like, I know that like, I promised to give a shout out or a birthday wish and I miss it. There's human error in, in, in uh, not keeping your word and then there's just not keeping your word which happens often. Uh, it's a reality, humans are flawed and I would tell you that the biggest differentiation between myself and many others if I'm self-evaluating that has been a big deal for me is I just don't cry. There's no crying in business. Like, like uh, you know, it, how do I deal with it? I move on. I collect data, I'm like, oh, Stefan doesn't keep his word very often so his word is not as valuable to me so I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt that he's gonna actually link this up, you know? And so, you know, whatever it may be, I think it's something that, you know, I, I, I don't like entitlement. Like, and I do think, believe it or not, I do think that people get upset with others from a level of entitlement more than anything else. Like, sorry, Rick, what, sorry, wealth, hellness, or wealth life, like, sorry that, you know, entrepreneur life let you down and didn't post that thing. Like, I, you know, I, it is what it is, what it is. Like, I just, I just let stuff roll off my back. It is what it is. I'm just prepared for the, the negative. And, um, and so I'm completely unfazed by it. I'm like, oh, that was intriguing. Like, not like, oh, like screwed me. I, I've been sabotaged. Like, I'm, oh, n- I failed because India didn't come through with her word. Like, oh, Ogilvy screwed me. Or like, like <clears throat> business. Put on your pants. Your big boy and big girl pants and get to work. And so, you know, I, I contextualize it. I use it as a data set for my next business behavior with that individual or organization and I just move on and, uh, and I don't dwell and I go forward. People, people slow themselves down. Thanks, it's true. It's true. It's like, like it's the game. Like I'm sorry. Like people are gonna let you down. People are not gonna come through. Like, 
stuff that like almost nothing turns out the way I want it to. It's the ability to adjust to that that separates winners and losers in the business world. I'm Justin. Justin. Timberlake? Yes, Justin Timberlake. This is Justin Timberlake. (laughs) Bieber? It's whatever Justin you want it to be right now. Okay. Bieber or Timberlake? Neither. I'll tell you later. (laughs) Novello. (laughs) Justin asks, if you were building a retail biz from the ground up, what trend would you be paying the most attention to? Justin, this is a silly question. I mean, all of them. Like, what do you mean, what trend? All of them. How people are shopping on mobile, you know, how bricks and mortars are are still very viable, uh, health and wellness, meditation, you know, technology. Like, not, there's no one trend to pay attention to. I'm not gonna give you, there's no secret that there's no episode 201, maybe Gary will answer my question and give me some incredible insight. They're all in play, all the trends matter. Mobile commerce, people shopping behaviors, real-time delivery, and then all the genres of things you can be selling, right? Like, just a million things people are into, like tea and yoga pants and, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, this, this question's kind of exhausting, and I'm not mad at you, Justin. Novello, uh, it's just, uh, it's just, it's a silly question because they all matter. I, I pay attention to everything I can, as much as possible, Justin, as many things as possible. They're all data sets, they all can lead to opportunity. Um, uh, you know, that's what I would pay attention to. Like, there's a million things going on. There's 75 different pillar, uh, core things that are going on in retail. The lack of people traveling to malls, you know, like, you know, Postmates same day delivery, like, you know, downtowns and cities emerging again in all, you know, the gentrification of neighborhoods, like, you know, fashion trends, what people are drinking and eating, like sneaker swag, like, I, you know, accessories on cell phones, everything that's happening in Asia that one out of every seven times happens in the US. Like, I don't know, all of it. Melita asks, if we aren't good with numbers, can we really be good at business? I'm shit with numbers. Next. Perfect. From Andy. Andy. Yeah. By the way, I'm not that shit with numbers, but I'm very average. What's up, Gary? This is Andy underscore Barden. Have fun. Link it up. Here in the Teton Mountains in Wyoming. I know you say you don't want to climb that goddamn mountain, but how do you think nature affects your brain and do you take time to get outside? Thanks, brother. Andy, great question. Beautiful setting. I do like the videos. Good job, India, for picking one. I do want more videos uh, in beautiful places. Andy, this is one. Look, nature's not at the forefront uh, of it for me, but I think a lot of people use it. I have a ton of entrepreneurial friends who rock climb, run marathons. I had a meeting this morning with Mark Evans that you'll see in Daily V. Uh, he's running 40 races uh, for his 40th birthday year and you know that's how he escapes and that's how he keeps his mental health and I think nature's an incredible, incredible uh, <clears throat> driver for so many. I'm so uh, thankful for nature in many ways. Uh, Obviously, just what it is in society, but from a business standpoint, I've watched entrepreneur after entrepreneur after entrepreneur really get enormous value from, you know, walking trails to, you know, surfing to like, it's incredible. It's not my thing. Um, It's just not. And, uh, you know, I really don't care about pretty pretty sunsets. Uh, I have no interest in ever going on a mountain trail. I have just none. Um, you know, beautiful fields are not interesting to me. Uh, I would be like, oh, we can build homes here and make money. Like, like you know, it's just, you know, it's not who I am, uh, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't bring enormous value to people. And, uh, and I watch a lot of people here go to, you know, the mountain. Even, you know, a lot of people that work at Vayner love working in LA and San Francisco because they provide so much of that. I've watched the New York crew do the best they can into the, you know, upper Westchester or the Vermonts or the Mains or, you know, things of that nature. They're all probably getting pumped because we're getting that time of year where nature plays a little bit of a bigger role. Um, So many get so much value. Even look at the body language of these three. Like, it's awesome. It's just not how I escape. I escape really in weird ways. I escape with the Jets. The Jets matter so much to me. That's how I escape. And the truth is, I don't, uh, 
you know, I work out obviously seven days a week now, as you guys know, but I'm doing a lot of that indoors. So I don't know. I, I'm just not drawn to nature. I've never been, um, you know, Mother Nature and I have respect, but not uh, not love. <laughs> All right, last one. Yeah. This is Vinesh. I'm 15 years old. My question is, whenever someone puts you down, how do you push yourself back up? Vinesh, you know, it's tougher when you're 15 um, as you're building your self-esteem and, and your foundation of your life. You know, I, I, you know so, but listen, if you're 45 and they're 62, I mean, there's so many people right now that are not doing what they love because they're worried about what other people think or what other people say, especially your inner family. We've talked about this at length. Um, I'm very passionate about this. I'm so grateful that I don't give a crap what anybody thinks of me while equally caring. It's incredibly important to me what Indy or DRock or Stefan think of me. It's incredibly important. It's stunning though how, how anti-establishment or how much I would push back when they would try to impose their will on me. And that's a very important differentiation. Um, actually, that's one of the first times I've ever kind of articulated this way and I like this. There's a very big difference between what one thinks of you and what one tries to do by imposing their way on you. I'm very open, empathetic, and quite self-aware of what everybody thinks of me and pander to it, react to it, and adjust to it. But for somebody to try to impose their way on me without knowing me is just super not interesting. And so, you know, I was able to navigate through junior high and high school and really not struggle with peer pressure. I just very honestly thought I was better than everybody. Uh, I didn't act that way. If you go talk, if you go find all the kids that went to high school with me, I don't think any of them say that I walked around with like I was cooler than them. You know, that would have been very hard as a four foot eleven freshman that was being made fun of for not being five foot. Um, it's just it's how I thought inside, and I think if there's a lot of intestinal fortitude to use a gorilla monsoon term. Uh, that's when wrestlers would get beat up, but then they would fight like the Hulkster and Macho Man uh, and Ultimate Warrior. That's, that was the whole kind of like genre of the '80s: get beat the crap out of it, and then all of a sudden, um, and so uh, that's kind of how I am. Like I can take a lot, and then all of a sudden, like you know, fight back. And so, you know, there's nothing I can say other than. <laughs> when you're 15 now, when you're 51 or when you're 91, you're gonna be stunned how little you care, how little it mattered. And, and this includes your parents and your siblings and even your children. This is an intense thing. This is a very intense thing. But if I could, if I could wish anything besides health on people, there's a lot. I say, this, I say this saying a lot. There's a lot of traits I like, self-awareness, everything. But man, there's an unbelievable uh, happiness that comes along with self-belief and, uh, and recognizing how this plays out. And let me tell you how it plays out. Prince, as he was taking his last breath, and it's a big shout out to Prince, I'm a huge fan. I don't think Prince cared what Billboard magazine said or what anybody said. It's just the way it is. It's the way it is. And so if through this plea on this show on 201 on a Monday in late spring, that if I could get four of you to understand if I could get four of you to understand it's just not gonna matter when people, I mean, I love when people, I, I'm, I don't even know what else to tell you. I'm gonna say it very clear. I just, let Stefan get very focused here because I wanna really deliver this with all the drama that it deserves. And I like when people put me down. I get off on when people put me down. Nothing is more interesting to me than to prove all of you wrong. I love the people that think I'm a huckster or I've got some hidden agenda or I'm not that good or I won't be that great or I think too big of myself or my dad had a liquor store and that's the only reason I'm successful or I got lucky or show me, like please, please, please continue to judge me and underestimate me because it's the only driver I have and that's how I'm wired. And I don't expect all of you to be wired that way, but if I can, through my energy, move any of you, and trust me, I'm reading your comments, because your comments are my oxygen, and I see so many of you, so many comments over the last three or four months of people saying, hmm, I've got a little more cockiness or confidence than I used to. As a matter of fact, I see it in you guys. I truly see my inner circle have more confidence when they're, like, it just rubs off. India, you're getting cocky. Have you felt it? Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. But it's true, right? There, there, there's a rub off. It's kind of like a leader on a sports team. Like it rubs off. 
And one of the great accomplishments in my life will be the fact that I was able to rub off my confidence, not only on my inner circle, but on the community that decided to, to give me. It's unbelievable how good I feel that I get to reward the amazing reward that you give me, which is in all the things that you could be watching right now, you're watching this. In all the things you could be reading, spending time on, time, you've decided to watch me, me. Do you know how incredibly empowering that is? And it's at scale, it's not three people. You know how empowering that is? And for me, knowing that not only do I give you tactical advice, or in a funny way that I answer question number three, a girl in Indonesia might say, well if Gary V is bad at math and has been successful, I can too. Or in this ending rant, you can care a little bit less what your coworker or your older brother or that naysayer says, or what I know so many of you deal with, which is the trolling and the hate and the, and the disagreeing, even when it's done well. And I love when people disagree with me in the comment section, I take it for what it is. Even when that happens, do you know how pissed I was at Daily V30? How many people like emphatically were drilling me for a bad episode? Fine, but like after all, like, and that's fine and I agree and we didn't do a good job setting that up and I don't think I set up DRock for success. It's a genre that he's not as passionate about. I could have done a better job. I understand that but it blows me away of how much venom people can put of like, like after you provide, it's, you're only as good as your last at bat. 200 great episodes of a business show, 30 great episodes of a docu show, 5,000 fucking interviews of business stuff, unbelievable engagement, answering your questions, answering your snaps, boom, one baseball fantasy thing and pure and utter disagreement, disparagement, hate, negativity, that's hard. I'm the most confident and it felt bad and I didn't like it. So what do I expect from others? I get it, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, it's not gonna matter. And you have to love yourself first and feel good and complete with yourself first. So as a 15 year old, I would do what I did as a 15 year old, which is start building those skills and not listen to your parents and not listen to your teachers and not listen to your friends. Respect it, but don't let anybody, anybody impose their way on you. It's you, you're with yourself and you've got to make yourself happy first. Good, right? You were inspired? Mm-hmm. Thanks, Anita. T-Rock, were you inspired? Mm. You're so used to I'm it? I'm kidding. Yeah, okay. It's like real cynical, right? <laughs> see what happens? Confidence. <laughs> you know what it was? It wasn't confidence, it was, see what he just did? He just did exactly what I was talking about. Right, you two are switching. All right, great. That's it, right? Question of the day. What should I ask? What do you, when you, you guys interested in anything? India, you interested? Actually, that, India, you and D-Rock get to ask the question today. I'm not very passionate about it. Start with D-Rock. Um, You're right, tough guy. <laughs> it's all right. You've got a lot of time to think. What is your favorite episode of Daily V? Oh. Oh. And why? That's a good one. Because why? D-Rock wants some quant, qual data. India? I want to know who your baseball team is and who you're rooting for. All right, awesome. You're in a baseball mood. Mm-hmm. Guys, thanks for watching 201. Ooh, 201. Yeah. You know, like it's like the next, the next grade, right? Like, isn't that how they do in college? 101, like Econ 101, Econ 201. Yeah. yeah. You keep asking questions. I'll keep answering them. <laughs>